the arts funding process traditionally is quite a linear and restricted process and we're kind of comfortable with that. And that's interesting because the arts is full of creative people but we've been pushed into these little boxes that says um, this, is, this is how you get money and this is what you have to do with it. Whereas this program's kind of gone kaboom. Let's see what happens if you get given money and then you work it out together and, and nobody has to miss out. I'm Fiona Sinclair and I'm coordinating the Connect to the Creative Grid project, uh, which is for the visual arts cluster within the Regional Arts Partnership program. The RAP program is fundamentally different from any other arts project that I've been involved in in the past and that was what made me really interested in participating because it's inherently collaborative as opposed to being competitive uh, and I think trust uh, and connectivity, those things can only happen if we break down the barriers between people who are uh, contributing to a project and they come together. So the RAP is about coming together. Um, traditional arts programs are about pushing you apart and going, yay, you're the winners. Sorry, you guys try again, you don't get to be involved. So one of the things that's really occupying a lot of time and energy and very exciting at the moment is the development of a series of group exhibitions that is occurring uh, in 14 venues across the state from Kununurra right down to Albany. Um, from you know, large venues to organisations that have no venue like the Kimberley Arts Network in Broome but are going to put up a pop-up show. So, um, so lots of different capacity organisations and lots of different types of communities and they're all responding to the one central brief. And what, what is interesting and very um, new about this is that it's never happened before. There's never been an, an experience in WA where uh, lots of different organisations respond to one central idea. And so it's going to encourage conversation between different communities about what um, what artists contribute to the cultural capital of their community and what, um, what makes different communities have different personalities, it's their, their local identity. I'm Gabrielle Sullivan and I'm the director at Ausdance WA. One of the really good things about the process was that when, when we did get our cluster together and it was huge, um, we had a really reasonable pot of funding um, to scope the project. So that meant that we could trial different ideas before we actually committed to going ahead with this, that or the other program. And that was so helpful, really, really helpful. Any other funding um, um, system wouldn't allow that. You'd have to go and get, you know, one pot of money saying we want to test the waters and then you'd have to go back and start the negotiation all over again to say, well, we can justify our existence now. Um, can you fund us to get the project up and happening? My name is Charlotte Martin. I'm the Projects Manager for Ausdance WA. May We Have This Dance is a cluster of dance projects uh, located in the southern region of WA. This whole wrap process was uh, thoroughly scoped out and planned um, to create more of an engagement and a lasting effect. We're bringing the community in, we're engaging them, but we're also setting up ways to sustain the art and the communication and the community after we leave again. When you see these opportunities with the dance artists going in and you see these kids that wouldn't necessarily be able to have these opportunities if we, we didn't have the rap project going on and you see how much excitement and love they have for, for something that they do naturally is dance. We all dance uh, but it's, it's something that is honed in and, and specialised and we can provide that and that's such a wonderful uh, opportunity to be able to give. My name is Chad Crichton, I'm the CEO of the Aboriginal Art Centre Hub of Western Australia, otherwise known as Archwa. Our stream of the rep is the Cultural Futures Next Generation Leadership Project. So in conversation with, with the five art centres that we're working with, they identified that something that was missing was working with new technology and new media. So we applied for funding under the federal government, uh, the Department of Communications and the Arts, 
the Indigenous Language and Arts round and we were successful in receiving further funds to contribute to the RAP, overall RAP outcome. We will be sending specialised technicians to their communities to teach young people how to use uh, cameras, video equipment, iPads, iPhones, things that might be available to people in the community to record stories um, and, and, and create artwork with a strong language component. Um, so again, um, bringing young people and old people together um, to encourage intergenerational knowledge exchange. The interesting thing about adventure is it always takes longer than you think it's going to take. You know, you look out in the horizon and you think, oh, I'm going to be able to get to that point in two years. And the more we've been walking, the horizon seems to move a little bit further. So uh, while we have achieved quite a few things already, I think the next six months is going to be really telling. And I think that some of the greatest achievements of the Creative Grid are actually going to happen on the other side of Horizon, at the other side of the program. What we're doing now is seeding some really good projects that will continue after the end of the program. If there's something I'd like to share about what I'd love, like people to really see about this project is the way this project uh, delivers key funding to organisations in the regions that really need it. Uh, it delivers it in a way that allows them the freedom to really tailor it to their needs. Uh, it, taking away a lot of the burden of having to spend lots and lots of time writing grants um, when they could be doing the activities. And that's what I really love about this project is that people have been able to um, you know, sort of come together, express what they need. They're working across the state, a large area, having conversations that they wouldn't ordinarily have and um, connecting. Um, this project connects people really well. This project has created a network between uh, like-minded people and people who don't always think alike, but it's brought them together from different cultural and linguistic contexts and they're working together on something that will have long-lasting outcomes for future generations. <music>